<laughs> uh, what's up YouTube what is up yeah yeah I'm just you know I'm in the driver's seat but I'm you know I'm kicking back in the sleeper you know uh, would this be partial sleeper berth I mean come on check this out you see that now that right there is what you call wait let me see if I can get you guys down I just got to show you the extent of this hold on what wait for it watch this can you I mean seriously <laughs> Oh, now that right there. Oh, I might, might as well go ahead and put it back. See, you can slide that back in. See, you, you can slide that thing out. Even more of a seat, more of a cushion. I don't care who you are, that right there is just cool. Now, let me see if I can get you set back up in position. Where was you at up here? Was you right, right about there? I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> Guys, I just got through cutting the uh, the video going from cross country from uh, Georgia to Northern Cal, and uh, yeah, if you hadn't seen it, check it out. It's right, right there, right there. Um, 7.2 miles per gallon cross country in a Kenworth W900L. I mean, that's just unheard of. But I'm gonna do this little vlog today, well, right now, and then I'm going to, uh, yeah, I ain't, I ain't thought that, hit, that far ahead. See, I've done part, I've done what got a shower, I've done, got, got my belly full, I ate too much. Ugh. A too much, Denny's. I got a, I got a Philly, Philly cheese omelet, hash browns with mushrooms and onions, and I'm stuffed. I'm stuffed. But anyway, let me tell you about the story about this. So I picked up this load, and as I stated at the beginning of the trip, I had 115 gallons in the in the tanks, and from there, well, let's back it up. Let's see, the day before, you know, the day I put this new Legacy in, the day before I was in Ringgold, and before I left out of the yard and went and made that 2 a.m. appointment, I topped the tanks off. And I was right at 120, 130 miles from there to my drop-off. So the first 130, 120, 130 miles, I had 40, 41, 42,000 in the box. And I got there and I was sitting on 6.4. And when I got done unloading, I did headed back up to a Daresville to exit 306 and parked at Patty's truck stop. And that might have been 70 miles, maybe. I got up the next morning and went down and picked up my load in Kennesaw. And by the time I got there, I was sitting on, uh, no, it might have been when I was at 6'4". I can't get, keep up. But anyway, when I got the load on, that heavy load of 6,200 pounds, um, from there until Tyler, Texas, when I topped the tanks off again, I had it built up to 7.4 on the tripometer here on the dash. And I went ahead and topped the tanks off and reset it. And from there, I went to Amarillo and where I got to looking at where I was gonna run out of diesel fuel and I was like, uh, I got enough to make a Kingman. Um, but I don't want to have to fill up, you know, the tanks on empty in Kingman. That's going to be expensive. So when I got to Amarillo, I went ahead and topped the tanks off again. That's uh, that was a that 66 gallon fill up. No wait, maybe I don't know. I have to check out the other video. Um, so when I got to Amarillo, I'm losing track of where I'm going here, guys. I topped them off in Amarillo. So when I did get to Kingman in Arizona, I wouldn't have to put so much. In the truck i ended up putting 103 in which was a lot better than 150 160 or possibly even 180 if i went all the way to kingman so yeah done that but by the time from amarillo i didn't reset my tripometer i was curious to see what i could do from 
from Tyler all the way over to Kingman. And when I got there, it was still, again, 7.4. And um, that's coming up over the Rockies, 7.4. So I was, I was, I was feeling like a champ, you know what I'm saying? Because I knew I was going to finish this trip out and have seven, five, seven, six on the whole duration of the trip. And then whenever I filled up and I got from, what was that, uh, Kingman, and I posted that picture the other night where I was showing 10 miles to the gallon. And the reason it was so high is because I just filled up in Kingman, the Petro, and from that's ex ex exit exit 66 and from there down to the river Colorado River so it's like 66 miles down to the river so when I got down there it was showing 10 miles to the gallon so initially I wanted to mess with you guys so took a picture uh, but got through there and then when I got to the top of the hill going through needles um, I got to the top and I had milked it all the way to the top and when I got up there I was sitting on 9.2 and I'm still smiling but soon as it's like soon as I got to the top and crested over that first little hill, they got I kicked it out of gear and I was coasting. But that next hill, as soon as I got to the top, I felt the headwind. I had a headwind from there all the way into Barstow, and I'm sitting there like, no, 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 I came too far for a headwind. Come on now, come on, Mother Nature. Anyway, I had a headwind from that point on all the way over to Barstow. And I've got a uh, an app on the phone here. Let me see if I can show you guys. It's called Wind Compass. And I used to use it a lot whenever I was dialing in my MPG skills back with my last truck going across country. But I pulled this up so you can see that. Anyway, give me the direction of the wind. And it was getting a 14, 13, 14, 15 mile an hour headwind with 22 or 23 mile, mile per hour gust and it was coming straight at me. So that's what it was saying and I was thinking, oh man, as soon as I can get out of this, as soon as I can get out of this, I can build it back up. Well, the only problem is um, I never got out of it. And then when I got to Barstow, when they, the little overhead things on the interstate, it said warning, strong winds ahead and I'm like, Good thing I'm parking. So uh, I went through Barstow, went, up, went down the hill, parked at the TA, and uh, uh, Driven left me a nice little note on the window. Uh, yeah, I've got plans for that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put it in right here. So yeah, that happened. And man, he should have just woke me up. I told him, I said, why did you wake me up? He's like, man, it's like eight o'clock in the morning. And I was like, well, I probably, I, I've done it about five or six hours sleep I, I was good um i said hell plus if i wasn't if i didn't get enough sleep i just went back to sleep after you left um but nonetheless he didn't he left me that note and then i was getting out of the truck to go grab a coffee and get on down the road to go meet up with brian down over in mojave and uh i heard somebody say sammy i looked over and i just watched this peterbilt pull in nice shiny peterbilt 386 I was sitting there watching, looking at a nice trailer, nice truck. It's nice and shiny. I was like, I'm sitting there thinking, that's a nice looking truck. Uh, and this happened to be the guy. He was backing in as I was walking out. And he hollered at me. And it's one of my subscribers. And uh, I walked up and he said, hey, man, what's going on? I said, nothing much. He said, hey, it's me, uh, Nebraska bull hauler, cattle hauler. I think it's bull hauler. Anyway, he's out of Tennessee. Uh, we, we exchanged emails here a while back about some things. And uh, anyway, it was him. So, got to hang out and meet him. That was pretty cool. And then I had to rush off because I had to go meet Brian. Um, then I rolled on into uh, Lodi, which by the time I got to Lodi, um, I had it built back up to 7.7. .7. Oh, yeah, I recorded a clip of that. Well, here we are. We are, oh, let me back this truck up a little bit. We are in Lodi. And can you see my mileage? 7.7 better look at that 7.7 .7. so there you go 7.7 .7. but I promise you if I can oh wait I, I got ahead of the story here when I got to Barstow it hurts my heart to say this I was at 7 mpgs 
Now keep in mind, when I hit California, I was at 10. By the time I got to Barstow, I was at 7. By the time I left Barstow and got to Mojave, let me mind you, it's still windy, uh, and got up through Tehachapi, when I got to the top of Tehachapi, I was sitting on 6.8. And I'm just like, man, I mean, I'm gonna cry at this point. I'm so, I'm really disgusted. I'm like, man, it's, I can't, oh, this can't be happening. Anyway, in my favor, fell off the Hatchby, got on Interstate 99, or Highway 99, and went through Bakersfield and up through Fresno to Lodi. And when I got there, I was at 7.7. .7. But all I can keep, all that's going through my mind is, if I wouldn't have had that headwind, by the time I got to Barstow, I'm pretty sure I would have still remained at about 8.5 to 9. And by the time I got up to Hatchby and down to Hatchby and that nice smooth rolling on 99, I mean, it don't matter what you're rolling on 99, you're going to get some good MBGs. Um, I knew in my heart I was going to be at over 9. Uh, I've done it before on, the, on that particular stretch, so I knew I could do it again. And I was projecting my fuel mileage and. Um, <laughs> I just knew I was going to be at 7.5 to 7.6. I mean, that's what I even told my buddies. I said, I'm going to be at 7.5, 7.6. And, um, well, I let you get, I let, I let them down. I still fell. Still fell with a 7.2. I'm happy with a 7.2. But it would have been 7.5, 7.6 had not I ran into headwind. But anyways, guys, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you're still wondering, you know, Let's dig, let's dig into this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it, give it away. Let's go ahead and do the drawing. Let's run that up and give away, not this shirt, of course, but one similar. Wait a minute. Because if, you if you're just tuning in, on my community post, I posted a link or a thing. I said, I said, what is gonna be my fuel mileage for the duration of this trip? I'm coming out of Georgia, Kennesaw. I'm going to Lodi, California. I'm gonna take 40, which I came out of, I ran 20 over to Dallas, Dallas 287 up to Amarillo, and 40 all the way in to California. I said, what's going to be my fuel mileage? And I've got 6,200 pounds in the box. That's all. And, man, there's a lot of, <laughs> had a lot of uh, high anticipation. Anyway, the winner, whoever guesses it, I was going to have a drawing, which we're about to do, and the winner is going to get a free shirt. Not this one. This is mine. You can't have this one. They're going to get a free shirt. So this makes sense. run off and leave my other shirt I did I did anyway it's a make sense trucker shirt and oh here what's this thing kind of it's kind of like that make sense truck if it don't make sense don't make dollars anyway t-shirt giveaway so anyway let's run into that I'll be right back well guys, the time is here and I had six guys out of the over 100 put in for it. Six guys nailed it and it was 7.2 miles to the gallon. 7.2 and some change. So anybody that put 7.2, 72 ish 7.25, 7.24, uh, 7.2 entered into it. And the first one we got right here is AV, AVI 45, which is Aviation 45. Uh, TL for Tim Fetters, JS, and that is for John Sanfrey, RB, that is for Raymond Bradley, TN, that is for the, the Nomad, and DZ, that's for Derek Zinner. So what I've done is I took, they're basically identical, and I'm going to fold them up, I'm going to throw them in the hat, and then we're going to draw for it. And there we have it. They're all pretty much the same Hold them all up identical and uh well let's, let's get down to it who gets the t-shirt all right guys i got you set up here we're gonna do the drawing courtesy of one of my favorite hats and well i guess what we need to do is there you go you see how it is just like i ain't gonna touch them i'm gonna roll them off in there and this uh Y'all hear that? They're bouncing around. They're bouncing around. Here, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I don't want nobody saying that I messed it up. I rigged it. So, you guys ready for this? Oh, let's bounce it around. I'm not gonna look at it. 
Here it is. And the winner is at. I'm just getting your phone in lock up. Aviation 45. Aviation 45. Uh, Aviation, you're going to have to do me a favor. You're going to have to send me an email. You're going to have to send me an email at Make Sense Trucking. Make Sense Trucking. Um, give me your mailing address. Give me your shirt size. And uh, look at my shirts down there in the Teespring. Uh, click on it and look at the colors. Tell me what color you want. So I need your mailing address, your shirt size, and what color you want. And uh, yeah, let's get you a free shirt. Aviation 45. And guys, I want to thank you for playing along. Uh, I had fun with this, uh, the making of this, and I thought it was kind of cool to throw a drawing in there. And it was cool to see you guys see your responses. And my first initial reaction was, good God, these guys got a lot of faith in OLE made. Um, LMA does really good, but come on now, it's a W900 flat top. We're talking cross country from Georgia to Northern Cal. And some of you guys are saying 8.7, 8.5. I was like, Jesus, I couldn't do that in my last truck either. Um, or I couldn't even do that in my last truck. That was way more aerodynamic than this one. And I know I was empty. I know I was empty. But, oh, I really was let down. 7.2, 7.2, I could have done a lot better than 7.2. I kept some of my buddies, I was, I was telling them what I was projecting, what I was going to do. And, um, and I'm sorry guys, I let you down. I told you, I, I, I told you I was going to do 7.5. At minimum, 7.5. Uh, and then I couldn't. But, you know, I'm happy with 7.2. 7.2 in a hood truck. This truck right here. Yeah, 7.2 in that truck, you really can't complain. And I know, I know, I know. Some of you guys are gonna get in your comments and be like, my Cascadia gets 8.5, or my Pro Star gets 7.9, or my Volvo gets, look, we all know if you go buy a Prius, you can get 50 daggum miles a gallon, okay? But this is a daggum hood truck. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, but this is a hood truck. Come on now. I know those trucks are efficient, but that's not very impressive. If you've got an aerodynamic truck and you want to impress me, show me you getting 12.5 cross country, not 8.5. Because um, I've done 8.5 in my last aero truck and I've done 7.2 in a hood truck, flat top, pulling a van. So the challenge is out. If you've got an aerodynamic truck and you can get 8.5, show me you can get 12.5 and then we'll be impressed. But anyways, guys, um, I'm glad you enjoyed, well, if you're still hanging around, I'm glad you enjoyed it because you're still hanging around. You guys rock. Uh, if you are subscribed, you're awesome. If you're not, maybe you should consider. Um, give the video a like if you hadn't already and ring my bell so you can see the rest of my videos I put up on the regular. Um, anyway, guys, winners never quit. Quitters, well, they never win. You gotta think how to rise. See you, bye. And I was like, no, 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 God, no. Still here? I got a feeling this guy behind me in this truck is looking at me like, what the heck is he doing? I'm vlogging, dude. I'm vlogging. He's not looking. He's not looking.